following program is recorded content created by the Truth Network. It's Matt Slick Live. Matt is the founder and president of the Christian Apologetics Research Ministry, found online at CARM.org. When you have questions about Bible doctrines, turn to Matt Slick Live for answers. Taking your calls and responding to your questions at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Hey everybody, how you doing out there? It's me, Matt Slick. You're listening to Matt Slick Live. Today is uh, May 15th, 2023 for the podcasters. If you want, you can give me a call. All you got to do is dial 877-207-2276. I want to hear from you. Give me a call and we can talk. And if you're new to the show, what we do here is answer questions on the Bible Theology, Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses, Christian Science, Unity, Baha'i, Islam, and various other things. So if uh, you want to join us, you can. All you got to do is dial that number, 877-207-2276. And also, if you want, you can email me. You don't have to uh, call in, but you can email me. All you got to do is uh, just, in, you know, just uh, put an info at karm.org. Email us at info at karm.org and um, I can get your your stuff and in fact we've got some of those we've been getting a, kind of a, quite a few actually so I'm thinking what I'm going to do is spend some time answering some of those also if you're so inclined and you like the idea you can go to stream not stream yard you can go to um, rumble rumble.com forward slash Matt slick live and you can uh, join us you can watch us in there. Why did it change the color? Oh, it definitely changed the color on that thing. Boy, I don't know. That's all right, though. Anyway, that's where we're at. So uh, that's uh, that show is on from a few <laughs> from last week. Oh, well, I'll get it figured out. All right. So I want to hear from. Oh, by the way, by the way. So uh, if you like, you know, if you if you like uh, hearing. Uh, you know the show and you want to participate all you have to do you know you can you can do that by calling and also if uh, you want with the chat people you want to get with the chat people you can do that too there's a lot of great uh, people in the chat room and uh, it's a lot of fun there are a lot of great people in there except for Ernie but uh, other than that there's a lot of really good people in there and um, uh, so I just want to ask that if you want to you can participate by doing that all right so there you go, and getting ready of all the stuff there. I got a lot on my plate, a lot on my plate. I have been working real hard on trying to get things to work right, and um, it's a you know I'll tell you it's, it's a lot to do, a lot to do, and just I would ask that you pray for me, pray for uh, this ministry because there's so much that needs to be done, and we are trying to uh, produce as much as we can for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you, there's been a lot of challenges lately. There's just been a lot of challenges. So if you don't mind praying for us, we could, we could ask that. Just to, You know, God knows what it is. God knows what the issues are. Um, we do need that, and so we appreciate that. All right, we have three open lines. Oh, we just had two callers, and then all of a sudden they just dropped off. So don't know what's going on. If you want to give me a call, 877 877- Two zero seven two two seven six. I want to hear from you. Give me a call, and uh, we can blab. All right, simple, simple stuff. So those whoever was was calling, they can call right back. You can try that again. All right. I think what I'm going to do is get to some of the emails uh, that are waiting. Uh, we have a lot uh, for the radio questions and stuff like that. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Okay, okay. Thank you uh, for having me on the guest on your show. The tyranny. That's right. Oh, yeah. I remember that call. This woman called up uh, in March and uh, talking about some pretty tough things that were going on in her uh, her life. And a lot of people were really concerned for her. And uh, if she's listening, call back. Let us know how things are going. I'd love to hear from you. All right, so we've got people calling in. If you want to give me a call, all you got to do is dial 877-207-7276. Let's get to Scott from Spokane, Washington. Scott, welcome. You're on the air. You're on the air, Hi, Scott. Matt. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh-huh. Okay. Hi. I, 
I, I've called a few times before. I, I just wanted to, I don't really have a question. I just kind of wanted to uh, mm-hmm. see if it would be okay if I could kind of just kind of explain something. I'm a part of a group. Um, it's called 509 Catch Em All. Uh, we're on Facebook and Rumble. I just kind of wanted to put it out there for people in my community. I know you're Wait, 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 wait. What's it about? Well, um, what we do is we assist the police in helping catch uh, active child predators. That's Ooh, how we serve the you. community. Good. I like that. Yeah, there's a show on TV. I watched one or two episodes. My wife doesn't like, want to watch it, but where some girls, uh, they they catch those guys. And so there's a show on Yeah, that's that. what we do. And in this week, we've already gotten two arrests. Um, okay. It's been very successful just this week alone. And we have another one coming this weekend that a guy from Idaho was actually going to be crossing state lines to solicit sexual relations okay. with a minor. So and let me so, ask you, hold on, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We have uh, children who sure. listen to the show. And so I'm always careful about what's said uh, in that regard. Um, yeah. But uh, are you a Christian? Oh, absolutely. Um, okay. I, I guess I'll just end with just sharing the verse that kind of applies to the situation, if I could. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it, it's Psalms 81, I believe, and it says, okay. Give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Mm-hmm. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the dead. Rescue the weak and the needy, and deliver them from the hand of the wicked. Amen, brother. Uh, I think you're talking about Psalm 82. Uh, yeah. But, uh Yeah. So Psalm 82 talks about that. So yeah, good for you. Good for you. Deliver, that's what we're, we're called to do, especially as men, to deliver uh, the wicked and needy from oppressors. It includes what uh-huh. you're doing. It also includes the, uh, the predators uh, who kill the babies in the womb. They're predators also. Yeah, I, I wanted to be a part of that, but I couldn't really find an in in the pro-life community mm-hmm. here. Um, and so I kind of popped on board with this, and it's, it's going great. And I just wanted to share as well that while we wait for the police to arrive, I, I do do my best to share the gospel with the man that we catch. Good. And I let him know about Christ, that he saved me from drugs and alcohol, and that he could, uh, you know, he's, he's there for just to reach out to him. Um, if Good. you're sitting in jail and you're, you're doing that, just reach out to God, pick up a Bible. So, Good. So yeah, I just wanted to put it out there. Five oh nine, catch them all. That, that's kind of. That's kind okay, of it, but so. they can. Okay, that's okay, and they can pray for you too. They can pray for that. Uh, it's a good thing. I hope they yes. catch those people and uh, deal with them appropriately. Yep. Yeah, pray for our safety for sure. It, it can be very yeah. dangerous. Um, sure. We often have to ask to pull up their shirt to see if there's no weapons. Mm-hmm. Um, we come semi prepared for that, and so it can be dangerous. Uh, so, yeah, safety, prayers for safety would be fantastic. All right, brother. Well, good for you. Appreciate that. All right. Have a great day, my friend. All right, you too, man. God bless. All right. That was an interesting call. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's get to Chuck from Burlington. Hey, Chuck, welcome. You are on the air. Thanks, Matt. Oh, it's mm-hmm. a blessing to listen to that other brother. You're you you're know, kind of uh, muffled. You're kind of muffled, so... Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, it was a yeah, blessing to listen to that other brother. Do I sound better now? Yeah, now you do. Yeah, you sound better. Uh-huh. There you go. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, what God can do when he saves somebody. My question was about the fall, you know? Okay. Like, man fell really hard, didn't he? Who? It's a little hard to hear. Man. You. Well, Adam oh, did. Okay. Man yeah. fell really Adam fell. Hard, didn't it? Yeah, Adam did fall pretty badly, and uh, he. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, sin entered the world. Man. Mankind on the way to hell. Yes, uh, that's correct. Mm-hmm. Boy, all the bad things that have happened in world history, and bad people, people have done awful bad things. But we all. Are- all of us kind of on an equal scale, it appears, have that same wicked nature, don't we? Yes, we do. whether we dip into it and use it, yeah. Well, yeah, that's correct, because of uh, what it says, it's original sin, and it it's dealt with in Romans 5, 19, 
and what it says there is that for the through uh, the one tr uh, man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, and the many is referring to the descendants, and uh, were made is in the aorist passive indicative, which means it's uh, something that happened uh, to them. It's a fact. So that's what's going on. So Adam's sin resulted in our condemnation, and uh, it was pretty bad. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a mystery, isn't it? What do you in mean, way? mystery? In what way? Well, okay. Who is responsible? Okay, man, man, Adam was responsible for his fall. But is, is it our fault how bad we are? Or is it a punishment from God for the fall? I know, you know, it's kind of a hard, bad question to ask, maybe, but like, I'm curious about that. Because it where will. does this wicked nature in us come from? Oh, it comes from ourselves. We're wicked in our hearts. We're by nature children of wrath, Ephesians 2, 3. We're dead in our trespasses and sins, Ephesians 2, 1. And our, the heart is desperately wicked and deceitful. No man can trust it, Jeremiah 17, 9. So this is the condition that we are in. And uh, because of Adam's sin, this is what happened to us. So we are slaves of sin. That's what happened. Okay? It's bad. So what it is. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay thank, you. thank you very much, Matt. Sure, no problem. Praise the Lord, God brother. Keep, praise the Lord for your ministry. Okay. Well, thank you. All right. Hey, folks, if you want to give me a call, all you got to do is dial 877-207-2276. Let's get to Mike from Durham, North Carolina. Mike, welcome. You're on the air. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, my question is, when I visit a church, how do I know the sermon is Christ-centered? How do I know the songs are Christ-centered? What is that? What do those sound like? Are you a Christian? I am. Okay. And I've been going um, to a Southern Baptist church. It's pretty good, okay. but... Okay. You know. All right. So I'm going to give you an, an example of, of a bad sermon. I can't do a whole sermon here over the year, but I break it down. And the, the, the basic thing I use is, is uh, you know, the Bible says in, in Exodus 20, 10 commandments, you, you know, do not lie. So it's, a, it's wrong to lie. So what if a pastor gets up and he talks about lying and he uh, says how God doesn't want it, it's against him and it's a sin against his character and you shouldn't do it and the guy gives some illustrations how lying cost people jobs and marriages and things like that and uh, he talks about that but he does not mention the Lord Jesus Christ and the redemptive work you know is that a, a good sermon and the answer is no it is not one of the things I learned in seminary was when a professor was uh, training me on preaching. I'm not saying I'm a great preacher or anything, but he taught me something that I never forgot. I remember where I was when my eyes were opened. And he asked me uh, in the preaching class, you know, we had to have preach a sermon, you know, and, and uh, I didn't get as good a grade as I thought I deserved. And I asked him about it. I mean, long story short, he said, could your sermon have been preached unchanged in a Mormon church? I thought about it for about 30 seconds. I looked at him. I said, yes, unchanged. They would have accepted it. And he said, then that's a problem, isn't it? And I said, yes, it is. And when we get back from the break, we'll talk a little more about that, okay? Hey, folks, you want to give me okay. a call? All you got to do is dial 877-207-2276. We'll be right back. Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the show. If you want to give me a call, all you're going to do is dial 877-207-2276. And I want to give a big thanks to uh, Del Fry for a $10 rant and Mr. Kidd for 5 Thank you very much, both of you. That uh, help is helpful and is encouraging, too. And boy, I'll tell you, lately, we certainly need that. There's a lot going on. So uh, please consider, uh, if you're interested, folks, you can uh, join us in the chat. Uh, you can do that. All you got to do is go to rumble.com forward slash Matt Slick Live, all one word. Find the today's show, click on it, and there you are. 
There you are. It's easy peasy. All right. Uh, we have four open lines. If you want to give me a call, 877-207-2276. Let's get to Mike. You still there, Mike? I am. All right. So um, I'm getting uh, slowly to teach you a little bit more about how a, a sermon could be good or bad. So the pastor, uh, the seminary professor taught me that, really shook me up. And he said, where's Christ in your sermon, Matt? And I was preaching in the Old Testament. And um, and here's an example of something. This is the actual sermon summarized that I was preaching. It was out of, out of uh, Second Chronicles 20. Is when a bunch of people were coming to, down from the north to destroy Israel, from all over to destroy Israel. And God said, don't uh, worry about it. The battle's not yours, it's mine. And uh, he destroyed the enemy. All right, now I'm skipping a lot of details in there, but I, I said, you know, originally I said, just trust God and he'll deliver you. And just trust him. And, and that's a good, it's a truth. But he would not give me a, a, a top notch grade. And, I, and he said, because your sermon can be preached, you know, he asked me, could he preach in a Mormon church unchanged? I said, yes. So I had to go back and think about it, because he asked me a question. He says, where's Christ in there? And I said, well, he's not there yet. He says, yes, he is. But John 5, 39, you search the scriptures because in them you think you have eternal life, but it is these that bear witness of me. The scriptures are about him. So, okay, those are the clues. So I, I, I went and re uh, did the sermon, and I learned something. And, and uh, when I preached it uh, the second time, I got a, an A+. Plus. And uh, the modification was very simple. It was the reason God said don't, uh, you know, don't worry about it. He's going to uh, take care of the battle is ultimately because it was an attempt by the enemy to destroy the messianic line by destroying Israel. And if Israel is destroyed, we don't have a Messiah. This is a, an attempt on all of us. And it says, and the cross is what he was trying to prevent, the arrival of the Messiah. And so therefore, you know, being saved by grace, being justified by grace alone. Not, you know, and so that was the thing. Now, I know it's a big, long illustration here, but if you're listening to someone preach, is it Christ-centered? It's called historical redemptive. Is the history, is the reason, is the goal ultimately based on the cross of Christ? So this is what we have to understand. This is what you have to look for. Sometimes so a preacher might get up and preach a sermon that sounds good on the surface. And be good, because being good is good. God wants you to be good, so be good. Be good. He takes a bow or everybody applauds. But the idea is you be good because the Lord Jesus Christ shed his blood and bought you. And you don't belong to yourself. You belong to him. He's your Lord. So live accordingly, according to the ministry of the work of the Holy Spirit upon those who have been redeemed by the blood of Christ. That is a sermon. Now, I would prefer that when I preach, I don't get to preach very often anymore, I, I miss it, but I would prefer to preach a sermon in such a way that it would not be acceptable in the Mormon Church, Jehovah's Witness Church, Roman Catholic Church, Eastern Orthodox Church, so that there's something in it will preclude me or could preclude that message being uh, accepted by those adherents, because those are all false churches. So that's just one thing. Okay, does that make sense about the preaching? Are you there? It, it does. I have, yeah, I'm here. I haven't heard it uh, kind of the, just geared towards Christians only and not being able to be taught in another church. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. In a cult church, a false church. So if you know about Mormons or Jehovah's Witnesses or Christian Science or Unity or, or whatever it is, could the sermon that you just heard be preached? unchanged in any of those and they all accept it if so that's a warning sign I never forgot that it's one of the most valuable things I learned in seminary it really was a valuable thing and it really helped me a lot and so if I were to preach in, on any sermon in Old Testament New Testament the reason ultimately for anything that we do believe change repent of aim for is because of what Jesus did because without that, you might as well belong to a Mormon church or, or a Roman Catholic church and you know, be whatever you want to be because when you die, you're going to go to hell. So this is, uh, it, it's hard to explain, so I try to illustrate it. I hope that makes sense. All right? Now about the worship. 
Worship is of different kinds, and people like different kinds. Like, I'm not a fan of hymns. I don't like the, the, the style. There's a couple I like, but uh, that's about it. I prefer contemporary worship, but it doesn't mean that contemporary worship is better or worse. It doesn't mean hymns are better or worse. What we have to look for in worship is it Christ-centered and glorifying God. And also are the words uh, this doctrinally sound. Now, this is difficult because a lot of the Christian contemporary writers couldn't argue their way out of a wet paper heresy. They don't know theology very well. I remember this one song, I forgot who wrote it, uh, God, I give you permission to come in and do such and such. Uh, it's a heresy. And people sing it. I give you permission. You don't give God permission. It's a, it's a lie. So there's, uh, just because, this, and furthermore, just because uh, hymns are old doesn't mean they're all good. Some of them don't have good theology in them. But just because they're new doesn't mean they're good either. And either one means, you know, old or new means good or bad. We have to check each one. So, are the words repetitive? Well, some people say that shouldn't be biblical. But the angels sing uh, before the throne, Holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty. They repeat. And so repetition is not in itself ungodly. It's not bad. What's the purpose of the repetition? Is it to uh, induce a trance? We don't want that. Or to glorify God. We do want that. And that's okay as well. So there's a lot of variables in there. But are the hymns and the contemporary songs and spiritual songs, are they cross-centered ultimately? You know, so that's what you have to look at. You know, our, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. You know, Martin Luther wrote that. It was a bar tune, and he adapted uh, it and uh, made uh, Christian lyrics out of it. And then there's Amazing Grace, you know, there's, or It Is Well With My Soul. There's a lot of these good hymns like that. But um, the, one of the problems uh, is, like, Amazing Grace can be sung in a Mormon church and unchanged. And that's a, it's, you know, you can only go so far with this theory of mine. But, uh, but you, anyway, you get the point? I do. Uh, I think something that sometimes concerns me so often I go to these churches, they'll sing 200-year-old songs, and there is no passion in the people singing them and in the church body. Like, it's just, it might as well be study hall back in elementary school. There's just, there's no feeling. I'm so glad you said that, because that's what I've seen so many times, too. You, it's it's duty. Stand up, sing these three stanzas, and sit down. Turn around, touch your nose, touch your toes, sit down, stand up. Yeah, it's uh, it's not good. Hey, hold on, we've got another break coming up. Hey, folks, if you want to give me a call, let's talk about this. It's uh, important and interesting. Eight seven seven two zero seven two two seven six. Give me a call. I want to hear from you. We'll be right back. Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everyone, welcome back to the show. We have four open lines. I want you to give me a call, 877-207-2276. Also, if you want to participate in the chat discussion and stuff like that, you can do that by going to rumble.com forward slash Matt Slick Live. All one word. You can check it out. All right, let's get back on with Mike from Durham. Are you still there? I am. All right, all right. Yeah, this is an important thing, and uh, what you said was uh, so spot on. We sometimes the the it's called a liturgy, and all churches have a liturgy, it's just an order of worship. And some have a traditional, some are more modern, contemporary style. But we have to be careful that it's not just so rote that it becomes um, uh, just habitual. People just sing it because that's what they do. Like go to the church just because that's what they do. Yeah, you know, and it's it's a problem. Yeah, it is. You there? I'm still here. Yeah, I'm listening. Okay. Well, at any rate, uh, if you have any more comments, you know, uh, that's fine. But, um, yeah, I'm with you. And I have a problem with the whole the lack of enthusiasm, <clears throat> the lack of, uh, lack of fervor in the Christian church. The lack, you know? Yeah, it's just disheartening. If I arrive and they they go through the motions, and I look around and I'm just like, yeah, and the uh, you know, 
I could get on a rant of, of the old King James. It's very, at least 50% of the churches down here preach out of it. But to me, it is uh, preaching in tongues because I have to keep looking at my wife going, what does that word mean? Right. right. And the King James only <laughs> stuff is ridiculous. And, and it, it, what, and I'm just going to open up. I don't like churches stuck with the King James. And the reason is because they're doing tradition over contemporary needs. Because the people outside the church doors, they don't speak King James English. They don't study King James anything from 300 years ago. That's not what happens. It's not how it should be. It's 400 years ago. And then they, what they do is say, this is the language that we want to speak. Well, are you concerned with the people outside the door? Are you concerned with those going to hell? Is that what you're going to do? You could go to them if thou shalt believe it. Is that how you talk to them? No, it's not. And you want to make sure that you don't have any more barriers between them and you and that you can uh, speak that gospel. But then the next question is, are they speaking the gospel? See, maybe that's why I don't ever get, <laughs> not ever, but I don't get asked to preach uh, in churches anymore. Uh I think it might be because I, I just tell the truth too hard, uh, you know. And I think tr Christians need to be very aware of their surroundings. They need the, the pastors and the elders need to preach to equip the Christians for the work of ministry. And the Christian's job is to be developed and to be trained and be used by God, not to sit in a pew, not to sit in a church thing on a Sunday morning, and then you, you've done your duty. That's not what Christianity is supposed to be. And a lot of people like that are going to find themselves on the outside, on the day of judgment. They got to make sure that they are following Christ and not their own whims of what they think Christianity is. And any church that would adopt an old system, and they think that that's how it always has to be because that's how it has to be. Then, okay, what? Do you, how does that impact the community around you and the people? Are you opening your doors up to the people? I remember when I was an assistant pastor. In um, this is for real. <laughs> Uh, I was being interviewed. I couldn't believe they hired me, and I, and I went and worked for them. It was not a good choice. It was not a good fit. But the, uh, the Dutch Reformed Church in Southern California, and it was my first uh, ministry job. And so I'm sitting there in the eldership in this big room. And before I'd gotten into that room, I was downstairs, and I, I was looking at this $250,000 organ. That's how much I found it had cost. And the pews and everything. It was a nice church, stained glass window, about an old building. And the whole thing. And I remember looking at it, you know, and, okay, that's fine. Whatever. And it's not bad in itself. And um, so these, these men, and all godly men, I'm not knocking them, but they asked me uh, about 45 minutes into the interview, they said, uh, we want to reach out to the community and have more people come into the, into the, the church. And I said, are you really serious about that? And they said, yes. And I said, then stop singing your hymns. And stop uh, doing the organ. I says the only time people hear organs is in horror movies and funeral parlors. You have a two hundred fifty thousand dollar organ. You know that's how much it was. They told me, you know. And I said they don't listen to organ music. That's just not what they hear. You want them to come from outside in a contemporary culture and if, and functionally step back in time two to three hundred years and be comfortable the way you want them to be comfortable. And that's not how it's supposed to be. Jesus Christ, God in flesh, he came to earth, became one of us, adopted the culture and the language and the dress of the time and where he was. Now, that's not to do it with compromise. We're not to compromise and stuff like that. But I said, if this is your goal, this is what you want to do, then you have to make it so that the people who they come in aren't suddenly repelled by whatever it might be, King James Elizabethan English, or stand up and sit down, and you can only talk when that certain amount of time is over. You know, I remember once in the same church, I put my arm around my, my uh, wife, and they actually rebuked me for it. The elders rebuked me for it in the service, putting my arm around the church, my wife. And uh, they just said they didn't want me to do that. And I said, I will do that any time I want in church, outside of church, if I want to put my arm around my wife in a church service during worship, I will do that. I says, you can't tell me not to. They did not like that. And I, I got on them for it. So we get stuck in so much tradition. And it happens in our contemporary churches that we get comfortable. We go to where we, we just go to church and we're comfortable. And the uncomfort is coming. 
God is tired of us Christians being so comfortable that we're useless. The iron is not being sharpened. The knife is not being used. The hammocks are what doled out in church. Be comfortable and, and everything. But I'm going to say something here, though. I, I mean, you got me going, but I'm going to say something. I went to church yesterday, and the normal pastor wasn't there. A different pastor was, was pre, uh, preaching uh, on staff. Young guy. And he was preaching on uh, the wedding feast and things like this. And I, I was, you know, okay, he was doing a good job. And he started off with an illustration. I don't like sermons that start off with a long illustration. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And um, nice enough, good speaker and a whole bit. And I was mildly entertained uh, or amused or whatever. Uh, you know, it was difficult to pay attention. Until he started talking about election. I could not believe what I heard. He actually spoke the truth of God's word about God electing us to salvation. And he said to the people, sorry, folks, if you don't like it, but that's what the word of God says right here. I was shocked. I haven't heard that kind of language from the pulpit in years. It was awesome. And this is the kind of thing we need to have. But we're not getting it across the church as much anymore. And the man be pam Hopefully theology. the younger generation will bring it. Hopefully, but I'm going to tell you, you know, I'm 66, and, and I've been on the web for years and years in technology, and I'm, I've noticed young men are coming up, and they know their theology, and they're ready to preach and teach. It's happening more and more. So... That's why, you know, one of the things I want to do, I, I just, I want to on one hand, I want to start a church just so I can preach the truth, just because I want to preach the truth of, of God's word so bad. I want to preach, I want to teach people so much. I want to equip them as much as I possibly can. I'm not saying I got all the answers, but I want so much to be able to, to equip God's people. It's what I want to do. And I, I, I'm just not able to, but I don't have the time. And I don't have the resources. I need so much help to be able to do all the things that need to be done. I've I spent six hours today, six hours, trying to get uh, camera lighting and stuff working just for the YouTube so that the Bible study will go right. We've been having so much trouble. I have to teach myself what the problems are, and then teach my research the solutions, and then see if I can figure out the solutions. And you know, there's just so much. There's just so much to do. The time's getting short. And I think the pastors and the elders need to start preaching as though the time is short. Because the government's turning against us. The government's just trying to destroy itself. And the persecution against the Christians is going to increase. Just as, as the COVID uh, uh, thing was used by the government to gain power and to control people. So it's going to happen. It happened quickly. Something else will happen. It's going to happen quickly. And there'll be more control that's going to be exercised over the people. And the people are weak, and especially the Christians, and the Christian men are the ones who need to get the message uh, in their heads and their hearts. They need to start acting like godly Christian men. And just like the other caller said in Psalm 82, what he said, protect the weak, deliver the, the helpless. This is what we're called to do. We're called to pick up the cross and follow after Jesus, not lay down in the hammock on Sunday morning and get a nice comfortable sermon. And so it's just it's a common theme that I see and I see the problems that need to be addressed. Anyway, you're just sitting there listening. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> but I think you agree. No, no, it's fine. I have a, okay. another question if uh, you have time. Sure, after the break, because there's the music for a break. don't know if you can hear it, but hold on, brother. We'll be right back after these messages, right. okay? Hey, folks, four open lines. You want to give me a call, 877-207-2277. We'll be right back. It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the show, Quarter Tell. If you want to give me a call, all you're going to do is dial 877-207-2276. Mike, are you still there? I am. Okay. Go ahead. If you had a question. Oh, something I do. Okay. So, mm -hmm. um, 
I'm kind of a visual person. I like to picture okay. things in my head. And something that I've been struggling with recently is John 1. Okay. Um, so Jesus was the word up until 2,000 years ago. I that, cannot not wrap my head around correct. the word. That's not, techni- that's not technically correct. Okay. Okay, then... <laughs> Okay, because this because tell me about it. <laughs> sure, by definition, Jesus came into existence two thousand years ago. By definition, and what I mean by that is that two thousand years ago is when the eternal Word, the second person of the Trinity, uh, became in union with the human nature in, in the womb of Jesus. That union is of the two natures. It's called the hypostatic union. That union occurred two thousand years ago. And we call the union, those two natures, in the one person, we call him Jesus. So Jesus, in that sense, had a beginning. But the divine nature did not have a beginning. It's eternal. Okay? You there? Hello? I'm, I'm still here. Yeah, I put it on mute so you don't hear anything in the background. Um, so what did the word look like? How did that present itself? Oh. How... How was that before the earth was created? Was that everything, like, was it the Bible? Was that the story before the story became what it is today? Before the universe existed, the only thing that was existing was God himself. God, the one being, the one thing. So just think, an an illustration I use is think of uh, carbon uh, carbon 12 sphere. That's all it is. It's simple one thing that's what god is not carbon 12 he's simple one thing one divine essence it's called divine simplicity within his nature exists all of his attributes the one thing has all the attributes equal to what he is but also the expression of the one divinely simple being is in the father son holy spirit which are simultaneous and how that works i don't know but that's who that is. God is that one being who exists as three simultaneous persons. There's a, and what's called a perichoritic relationship. The perichoresis is that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit each mutually indwell each other because they're all the one substance. It's beyond our comprehension. Okay. Okay. Was, I guess my point is, is like, was the word, though, like, I think of, of the Bible as the Word. You know, we always talk about the Word. Let's open up the Word. So, is the Word Jesus in that sense? It's used in a different sense. Uh, we call Jesus the Word in flesh, but the Bible is also called the Word, and they're used in different senses. The Word is just the Word of God. It says all the Bible, the Old Testament, New Testament, the writings. But then we say the Word became flesh. It's different. We're not saying the Bible became flesh. But they're similar because both of them are inspired and are the so to speak the breath of God by which truth comes because the word remember John 1 1 in the beginning was the word well in Genesis 1 1 in the beginning God said let there be light so God spoke that speak the word let there be light and the Holy Spirit was there the hovering so the three members of the Godhead were there in the beginning and John 1 1 is a reflection of the that uh, verse in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth so you're asking questions that are good, but there's no way to absolutely answer them because we're talking about the nature of God's divine essence from eternal time. You could, if you want, uh, I've written a, a rather extensive uh, paragraph, 500 words on the Trinity, and you could go to CARM and you could look up um, an examination, in-depth examination of the Trinity. And it's broken up into five segments, I believe it is. And you can read it and you can check it out. Sounds to me like a lot more information. Is this something you struggled with in the past? I don't struggle with it. I accept it. Yeah, I don't struggle with it. Yeah. I'm I'm not getting your head wrapped around it. Well, I tried once, and then I heard a a whiz-bang sound in my head, and I lost 40 IQ points, so I learned to give up. Okay. (laughs) So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, how does God work? I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. It's like time. You know, it has three aspects to it, past, present, and future. They're all by nature time, but they have distinction. But they're all quality, they're all the one thing. God is like that. He's one thing, but there's distinction within him. 
And I just go, that's as far as my brain can take me, and I'm okay with being ignorant. Okay. All right? That sounds pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> okay, brother. Okay, well, God bless, man. All right. Okay. <clears throat> let's uh, let's get to Thomas from Salt Lake City. Thomas, welcome here on the air. Hello, Matt. Hello. It's been a while. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, I can. Mm-hmm. So what do you got? What's up? It's been a while since I've tuned into you. Right. I can tell um, you are you got some heavy stuff going on. Yeah. And I'm actually kind of curious what what it is that you're dealing with as far as <laughs> I'm with you brother as far as starting a church that it, I know Jason Wallace, Apologia, all those guys. I uh-huh. was there in the Sean McCraney days. I've been around the block on that and I man I'm just saying I feel your heart on what needs to happen especially now everything mm-hmm. you're saying about what we're about to go into and in mm-hmm. Christian men preaching yeah. the truth and with your mind and your knowledge and a preacher like me at this <laughs> hey where do we start a church I'm I'm with you on that and then I, I, just, I am sincerely just personally interested since I haven't listened to you for a while um, just kind of what what you're, I assume it's just the pressures in sustaining things, but, but how do we get no. a church going? And I would love to help, and I'd also like to know how to get a hold of you privately. Well, you can just uh, email us at info at karm dot org. Um, but I'm not sure what you're asking. Uh, uh, so you kind of talk about different things. So what, what are you uh, what are you talking? About? What, what's your <laughs> what's your question? Well, what. what uh, well, one thing is, uh, when when I've listened to you before, you were very personal about things going on in your life and some of the pressures and all. You know, I, I'm just curious. So like, I can tell it's heavy, oh, okay. and and well, I would yeah, mind doing right. that. And I think that yeah. that might help people also support if they knew a little, you know, just a little bit more we'll tell you information. What. I'm in. Just, I'm enjoying just because show, you I'll tell you that. just because you asked, I'll I'll tell you. Thank you. So, all right. So my wife has a lot of medical problems, and I'm not complaining about that. You know, through sickness and through health, and that's fine. It's a privilege to be able to serve her. But uh, she does have a lot of of uh, problems. She's a trooper, and she goes through a lot of pain on a daily basis, and she uh, deals with that. And it affects our marriage. It affects all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know, just that's just yep. life. And I'm not saying you know it's uh, yeah. you know it, you get it. Okay. So basically. Um, I'm the researcher writer for the articles on CARM and overseeing the missionaries, overseeing the people that help uh, trying to and yeah. do stuff so there's always That's more to do oh yeah. it's huge and I'm very good, yeah. pretty good yeah. I should say, pretty good at tech but uh, I could teach advanced Excel and Word. I can teach people how to do stuff. I can teach HTML, CSS, HTML. I could teach all kinds of stuff. But what's really the, the issue here is, is uh, trying to get things set up for Bible studies on Thursday nights. It is a pressure cooker, and it's hard. Yeah. And trying to do stuff yep. and trying not to spend any money, and tr- yet trying to make things good. And I have to develop yep. uh, openings uh, for videos that I'm going to be doing. Uh, I have to convert articles yeah. into videos. Plus, I had to t- <laughs> you got me going. Ah. I had to teach myself how to do auto subtitles in videos. Yeah. And out of a program, which I had to research to make sure I could do it. And then I need to get a friend who does sign language and then have her come over and do sign for the stuff that I'll be developing and then put all of it together in a video format that I have to develop and do each one like this. Then there's one minute uh, yeah. Christianity I'll be doing, one minute apologetics, plus converting articles over. And the technology that's necessary behind all of it is just immense. I have yep. to do, I spent six yep. hours today just trying to do one thing. One yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I don't have I, the uh, tech. But I want to preach and teach, but, you know, I cannot, uh, yeah. I can't do any of the peripheral stuff. I can right. preach you and can't. teach. We need a bunch of people you who really do everything can't. else. Right. 
yeah, you can't do it all. And no, I can't. Uh, yeah, uh, I have a deaf son, by the way. Um, okay, maybe could find some deaf uh, uh, sign language help with that. But anyway, friend. dude, I we have a friend who does that. I yeah. appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot more, but uh, I could I, I could really is. get down and dirty. Yeah, that's only no, that's only about three percent of what's going on, really, as far as the, yep, the heavy. I know. I hear you. Hey, my pleasure yeah. with you, and uh, I'll be in touch. Sure, thanks. Yeah. And okay. uh, yeah, God bless. Hey, hey, okay. doing the radio show still? That's fantastic to tune into, and there mm-hmm. you are. That that's, that's critical. By God's and grace, and pray for the radio, today. pray for the radio network down there, uh, because uh, I know the guy who yeah. runs it, and. Uh, Russ yeah. and uh, Russ, he's a great guy. Yeah. yeah, he's a great guy. He is, and uh, they're just trying to keep things going, you know. And uh, a lot yeah. of people working. Yeah. So, okay. Well, yeah, praise fantastic. God, buddy. All right. Thank you, my friend, my brother. All right. Man. God bless. Okay. God bless. Bye. All right, Devin from here in Nampa. Hey, Devin. Welcome. You're on the air. Hey, Matt. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing radio. That's how I'm doing. What's up, man? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how long you have in the show, but um, I'll ask you a quick question. So mm-hmm. um, in at Matthew eighteen six, when Jesus mm-hmm. is talking about if anyone causes one of these little ones to stumble, is he talking about literal children or newborn believers? Well, he's talking about the children that's right there. Because whoever humbles himself as a child, uh, and uh, mm-hmm. Pideon, it's a young child, it's greatest, whoever receives one child uh, in my name, Pideon, again uh, receives me whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble and so that's what he's talking about is the children you cause them to stumble oh, okay that's why okay, the gotcha. uh, people who injure uh, children and do stuff like that cause them to stumble like that and turn them into democrats for example oh man that's uh-huh. a bit of a joke but uh yeah judgment's coming uh, upon all those who will teach them to be ungodly who causes them to stumble, teaching them atheism, teaching them uh, relativism, moral relativism, and not bringing them by the way of the Lord. Oh, yeah. The judgment upon the parents will be heavy. That's mm-hmm. right. Raising okay. them in Mormonism, yeah, raising them in Catholicism. That's right. That's right. Yeah, because I sometimes oh. see this verse um, going around, like in a Christian group that I'm at, talking about child drag shows and stuff, you know. So I was That's another one. To, yep. You know, that perversion. Stuff. That absolute perversion of drag drag shows to children. Men need to go in there and Mm. stop it. They put a stop to it. Men need to get up. Real men need to go in there and stop it. Yep. Use the stop. Protect Mm. the children. We don't. No one will. All right. We're out of time. Okay, brother. Got to go. All right, man. Okay. Hey, folks. Well, we're out of time. We're at a fast hour all of a sudden. May the Lord bless you by its grace. We'll be back on here tomorrow. We'll talk to you then. See you. Bye. Another program powered by the Truth Network.